Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Retro Bros. Um, so today we wanted to talk about um, some of the things that we've picked up along the way um, and just have a look back really. You've seen in some of the videos in the past we've picked up all sorts of Dreamcast stuff, of, of N64 stuff, of Mega Drive, of, of all sorts of different retro games. So today um, I chose something um, that we bought in one of the recent videos coming up, uh, Nintendo Power magazine. So this was really cool because really we saw it, there was loads of cool magazines and this was at Level Up Games in Canterbury. But one of the things that strikes me the most about these old magazines is the fact that there's so much artwork. I'm only going to pick out a few bits, a few of the cool bits that we found in here. They have actual comics. Seeing this kind of stuff, it's, it gives life to the characters outside the games and I think that's something that Nintendo especially did really well. This is a Super Mario Adventure. Um, it started midway through a story. Um, you've got Mario and Luigi standing one side of them. They've got a massive boo on the other side. They've got hundreds of boos, right? And they don't know what to do. Eventually, they panic, 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 and then they get stuck back to back. It flips over, and there's you know a wedding going on because you know Bowser's uh, you know managed to kidnap the princess and whatever. And then hours later, they're still there on a face-up because of course the boos can't look at them. Finally, they manage to make it into a room. They find a bed sheet. They dress up as doctors. And then Mario psychoanalyzes the boo and talks about his childhood and how the boo used to get bullied at school and says there's a whole universe out there. Luigi's like, that will happen to me as well. By the end of it, the boo is like just turned com into this completely really nice guy and he helps Mario out. Seeing this old Mario again, it's the same as on the back. You've got this, this is the, can you see that? Mm -hmm. So this is the Mario that we remembered, this old school kind of cool Mario. And the first thing that we thought was, God, that reminds me of those old uh, Mario cartoons, the Super Mario Brothers, um, are the actual cartoons, and they used to be the really cool, like, Super Mario Brothers rap. And then it reminded me of the really cringe kind of, <laughs> two, basically a fat guy in a Mario suit, um, who looked like Father Christmas, but but an Italian version. With the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. If your sink is in trouble, you can call us on your double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Uh. Also, yeah, after researching that, we, we had a look at a couple of the cartoons and um, and they were wicked and they brought back memories and Adam managed to stumble across the fact that we had never seen this, but they brought out another cartoon called um, Super Mario Brothers Three. But Cootie Pie, we plundered the whole Mushroom Kingdom to get you the best gifts a Cooper could steal. They used the same voices, as far as I know, it sounded like they used the exact same voice actors from the original Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Look, Luigi, there in the White House. That's the President of the United States. Cootie Pie will ruin America. How can we help America when we can't even help ourselves? That guy in the funny helmet told me his boomerang was more powerful than your fireball. He said what? I'm going to quickly touch on one of the games in here that was huge for us when we were younger. And that was Bart's Nightmare. a game that was just so in classic Simpsons fashion like really psychedelic and like Bart falls to sleep you've got Jebediah Springfield's head the statue like bobbing around on the floor you've got Lisa as the tooth fairy you've got so many really cool things in here and each time you jump into one of the pages which uh, Bart's homework was thrown out the window you go to this crazy kind of it's like 10 different games in one. You can be Bartman and suddenly you're fighting Barney on a big pink elephant, <laughs> like Bartzilla, which is probably one of my favorite ones, although I can I found it really hard to do. Infection World, like, and look, like, oh, these pullouts. I don't know if you can see this, but this really cool old school pullout of all the rest of the levels. Itching Scratchy Land. And on the other side, you've got a poster the new Roadrunner game. With these games, they lay it all on the line. They say, look, here's the level, right? 
this is what you're going to be doing. It's almost like they give away everything, but it makes you want to play it more. I mean, down here there's Kirby's Dreamland, and it tells you how to complete the game easier. Um, and that really takes me back, because Kirby's Dreamland um, was the original Kirby, if I'm correct, on the Game Boy. Um, and I remember playing Kirby's Adventure on the NES, and there was a th it was a throwback on the NES to Kirby's Dreamland on the Game Boy, the last level. One of the things was there's a super scope, which is, uh, I imagine it's, it's the, like the silent scope for the NES, but it's for the SNES. This isn't the only one of this kind of thing we have. Like we have the, the Mega Drive, the book of artwork of Mega Drive that was recently on the Kickstarter that has an encyclopedic kind of history of, of, of Mega Drive games. We've got the Nintendo Bible over here that you've probably seen propped up on the mic. But in some of the videos that we've done, if you see anything, it could be a game, it could be something we've picked up, and you want us to talk about it, then comment on our page and we will make a video about it. Stay tuned for more retro content, adventures and finds, and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.